Hello and uh, welcome to the first Foxdot tutorial where we'll be covering how to use the basics of the system. Foxdot is a Python library for live coding that contains an interactive editor that allows you to run code while you're editing it. You can write Python code and run it by using control and return. For example, print hello world and you can see the output there in the console and you can use mathematical operations and again you can see the rules there in the console. To start making music with Foxdot we use a player object in this case P1 and assign it a synth using the double arrow syntax. Uh, we'll use the plug synth here and we can give our player instructions in round brackets. If we run this code with no instructions, it'll just play a single note on repeat until stopped. We can call the stop method on P1 to stop it looping. The first argument in the player synth is the pitch, which can be a single number or a list of numbers. So. We can put a list within the list to lace the pattern, which means it will play each value in the nested list in turn on each loop through the sequence. So in this example, it'll play the sequence 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 5, 0, 1, 2, 7, then 0, 1, 2, 9. We can uh, put a sequence in round brackets and it will play all those values together, uh, forming a chord in this case. As a disclaimer, P1 already existed before we started. When Foxdot is booted, it allocates any two character variable name to an empty player object, so to speak, and you can only use the double arrow syntax with an existing player object. If we try doing this with a variable called foo, then we'd get an error. As you can see, name foo is not defined. Um, to do this, we have to create a player object called foo first. So, to see all the available synths, such as pluck, um, you can use print synth defs, and you can see them all there at the bottom. Synth def is the super collider class used to define a sound, and this provides a list of all the defined synths in Foxdot. So, we'll use pluck for now. Uh, actually, let's create a new player object with a different synth def. Okay. Um, we can use keyword arguments to set the attributes other than pitch, such as the octave or duration. The default octave is 5, so if we want to use a lower octave, we can set oct, which is short for octave, to 4. We can set durations using dir. We can change this while the player is running and it automatically updates. So if we change the duration, there's a seamless change in the rhythm. If you want to stop multiple players at 
once you can use the command clock dot clear the keyboard shortcut control period will also execute this command um, so if I do this again you can see that clock.clear has appeared in the console. Clock handles the scheduling of musical events and if you want to see what's currently playing you can print clock. Right now nothing's playing so you get an empty list but if we play them again you can see um, it's playing a pluck and a blip and that's the beat it's next scheduled to play. Uh, clock um, also handles tempo so if you want to change that we change clock.bpm so by default it's 120 but we can change that just by doing equals change that while the players are, are running. To change the scale being used, we change the value of scale.default. Like uh, to see all the scales available in Foxdot, we can use print scale.names, and that gives you a list of all the scales there. I guess for this example we'll just use major and minor, a bit easier to hear the difference. So. Yeah, again, you can change this while players are running. There is a special synth def called play that allows us to trigger audio files. Instead of a list of pitches, it takes a string of characters as its first document where each character is mapped to a file. To create a drum beat, we can use X, which is a kick drum, hyphen, which is a hi-hat, uh, O, which is a snare, and we'll use another hi-hat. The string goes through a parser, which allows a level of pattern manipulation within the string itself. So we can use square brackets to play multiple samples in the space of one event's duration. And we can do this with many characters as you like. Similar to using nested lists in the other player objects, we can lace patterns here using round brackets. which is nice, but if you want to introduce a bit of variety, you can put them in curly brackets, and that will play one item from the sub-sequence, so to speak, at random. I said each character is mapped to an audio file, but that's not strictly true. Uh, each character is mapped to a folder of files, and we just play the first file in the folder by default. To select another file in that folder, we can use the sample keyword, like so.
other keyword arguments can be seen by executing player print player dot attributes and that gives you a long list of all the different keyword arguments we can use which will be covered in more depth in a later tutorial but this is giving you an idea of how to use them so we'll use chop for now so chop chops a signal into a uh, number of pieces. So let's go back to P1. So have a play around with the different synthefs and different attributes and um, see what fun you can have. Alright, thank you for listening. See you next time.